Hello everyone. So today's video is about one of my favorite subjects, which is troubleshooting. More specifically, we'll discuss troubleshooting I.O. performance issues on Linux. So let's say for example that you log into a server and you run a find command or a copy command and you notice it's extremely slow. Or for example that you have an application and it is very slow or you get complaints that the application is very slow and you log in and you try to identify the bottleneck and you want to rule out that the issue is related to IO performance uh, bottleneck okay so let's connect to our test machine so First of all, let's see how many disk devices we have on this machine. So we've got XVDA so and the XVDF, so two disks. Each disk has just one 8 gigs partition. Good. First thing we can do is do a top. This should give us a fairly good idea about the general resource usage on the machine. So what we notice here is that CPU usage is, is normal, seems to be stable at 10% or less. But what doesn't seem normal about this is the weight percentage. So the weight CPU percentage is basically the amount of time the CPU is spending waiting for IO operations to finish. If this is, in my experience, if this is higher than 10 or 20%, it's, it usually indicates that, there, that the bottleneck is, in fact, related to I.O. operations. So now that we have confirmed that the bottleneck in our case is actually disk performance, what we should do next is pinpoint exactly which one of those two disks that we have is experiencing performance issues. And the best way to do this is to use IOSTAT. And as you can see here, um, it's not very useful if you just use it like this, without any flags, because it just prints the metrics from the first metrics it recorded uh, when the system first put it up. So let's take a quick look. Which commands, which flags actually can be useful for us? We've got dash h. This is useful to make the output more human friendly. And this one is very important. This is going to emit that first use the useless first report. And this one is also important because it displays some very useful extended statistics. So let's do it. So we've got, I should do iostat, sorry, dash h, y, we can also use dash m to make the output printed in megabytes per second. The default is kilobytes per second, I believe, and dash x. Let's say we'd like a report to be printed every one second and we want four iterations. Awesome. So the output clearly indicates that the disk that is having performance issues is clearly XVDF. IO utilization on XVDA is nearly 0%, so we've got nothing, so we've got no problem there. But for XVDF, it's almost always at 100%, which means we've got an issue there. All right. So not, now that we have located or pinpointed which disk is actually suffering from IO performance bottleneck, the next step is to actually find out what is the process or the job or the application that is hogging all of the IO resources of that disk. So the way we can do that is to use a command called IOTOP. And this command is usually um, not installed by default. 
on all Linux machines. So what you should do is just install it. It's pretty straightforward. So for Red Hat based machines, you just do yum install IO top. In my case, I have it already installed, so I've got nothing to do here. So let's execute it. All right, there's a lot of output here, and I'm pretty sure that not all of those processes are using IO resources. So what we're going to do is use a very useful flag here, dash O, it to only show the processes or threads that are actually doing IO operations on our disk. All right, so let's do IO top dash O. Nice, this is much cleaner. Now we can see that most of the time we have only three processes that are using IO on our disk. We've got here a kernel worker, which is using some IO, but this is not fairly normal in almost all systems. And then what is interesting is these two commands here. So these are actually the commands that are hugging all of the IO on our disk. So mission accomplished. We have identified the processes that are actually using all of the IO on our machine. We've got their process IDs. We can terminate them if they are illegitimate or abusive commands or if they are launched, for example, by a buggy application or something, or if they are legitimate commands, we can let them finish. But at least now we have confirmed which processes that are using all of our IO resources. That's it, guys. I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you in the next one. Bye.